Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of something super secret. <laughs> Still working on those seasonal teas. This is one that I've been working on for about a week or so. Really, really good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking photo, talking video, talking tech. Today is a photo day. We're gonna be talking about Nikon and Red, the lawsuit that started between the two of them at the beginning of this year. And I was reading a couple of articles over at Petapixel as well as DP Review, and I wanna highlight a couple of points in the DP Review article. I'll read this to you. But more importantly, I wanna get your thoughts on this because I think that it is very important as far as where things go with Nikon moving forward, let's say. Is this technology that's currently in the Z9, for example, that allows lossless compression, like crazy, crazy lossless compression. We're looking at like 8K, 60P, whereas there's just, you can't even tell that it's being compressed. Is that going to be ripped out? Will there be injunctive type of measures? Um, we don't know. So I want to read this to you and I want to get, once again, your thoughts on it. But before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They are free. Check them out. Also, if you like this video, even in the least, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. So let's jump right into this. As I said earlier this year, the cinema camera manufacturer Red filed a lawsuit alleging that Nikon illegally used Red's patent data compression technology in his flagship full frame mirrorless camera, the Z9. Nikon has answered Red's lawsuit and denied almost all infringements, almost. Red's original lawsuit claimed the Z9's internal compression raw capabilities infringed upon Red's patent for compressed raw. Now here's a little bit of a backstory about the compression technology that we're talking about here. Nikon licensed Tico Raw technology developed by Intupix. Intupix described how its technology allowed Nikon to introduce 8K 60P video into the Z9 through a firmware update earlier this year. Tico Raw's patented compression technology is mathematically lossless and visually lossless down to one bit per pixel depending upon the compression rate used for line-based compressing. That is amazing. One bit per pixel. Unbelievable. They continue by saying this is very similar to how Red describes its compression technology. Red has sued other companies involving its patent, including Keenafinity, Nokia, as well as Sony. Now, Sony countersued seeking damages and an injunction. In Red's lawsuit against Nikon, Red sought, quote, an increase of damages up to three times the amount found or assessed due to Nikon's willful and deliberate infringement and is entitled to be awarded for attorney fees. Nikon admits it knew about Red's prior lawsuits involving Red vs. Keenafinity, Red vs. Sony, Red vs. Nokia, and Nikon further admits that it has known of the asserted patents at least as of the date of the service of this complaint. Nikon says, Nikon denies that Red is entitled to any relief in its action and asks that the court to deny any of the relief requested by Red in its complaint. Red's claims for alleged patent infringement fails to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Nikon claims in its answer to Red's suit that Red isn't entitled to injunctive relief because no injury has been established. Nikon continues to say that an injunction would serve the public interest. Nikon also asked the court to enter judgment in its favor and against Red as follows, that Red takes nothing and is denied any relief whatsoever, that Red's claims against Nikon be dismissed in their entirety and with prejudice, and that Nikon is awarded the cost incurred in connection with this action, attorney fees and research and all the rest of this stuff. Interestingly, Nikon is taking what appears to be a different approach to the rebuttal to the lawsuit. 
suggesting that Red's patent shouldn't be enforceable. Specifically, Nikon is arguing that because Red had shown off and taken pre-orders for cameras using its compression raw technology before applying for one of its key patents, it's claiming Nikon infringed upon. Red's claim to the technology is not valid since the patent must be applied for before information is made public. This is very important right here. Red suggests in his lawsuit that this patent was based on an even earlier patent application. But Nikon further argues that several of the patent key claims were specifically mentioned in a previous application submitted before Red made its camera and its compression raw technology public knowledge. Basically, what is being said here is that Nikon is arguing that Red's patent should never have been approved of in the beginning. Now, why do we say that? Is because that supposedly Red showed this camera or a camera with this technology back in 06 at an NAB show, National Association of Broadcasters, once again back in 2006, and they took pre-orders for the camera. So they showed the camera and they took pre-orders. Okay, so that's all well and good. My question is, was the camera ever sold at that point so that someone was able to see the technology? Because if you just show the technology, does it matter? If I write a program and I show you this new program, let's say it's a game, and you see it, well, yeah, you can go and make a game that's similar, but the technology and the algorithmic equations that are inside of the software are mine. So when I patent them, you've never seen them before, right? So that's my question here. Also, my question would be, when they look at this code and they compare it, Nikon code to Red's code, how much of the code has been altered? Is it a one-to-one -one copy? It's literally the exact same crap. Or is it 10% of the code, 20, 50, 75? What is the percentage of the code that has been changed? Also, at that time in 2006, did someone from Nikon get a hold of one of these cameras if they weren't being sold and reverse engineered it? Or maybe just recently, maybe 2016 or so, reverse engineered it and then used it. Is that okay? I don't know. Is that okay? That's my question to you. Also, we know that art, photos, music, you can use derivatives of other people's work as long as there is a specific amount of change to create a new work, that being photo, video, and like I said, music. You hear it all the time. DJs will use a specific riff and you know, be like, God, I've heard that before, but they've modified it and they changed it. What is the amount of change that is required? And did Nikon make that amount of change to the original code if they did reverse engineer it? So I guess all in all, we don't have an answer what's going to happen here, but we can only speculate. I'm very happy that Nikon has basically said, hey, Red, you know, take a long walk off a short pier and we're going to fight you on this. Now, are they right? I don't know. Is Red right? I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered here. But I think that it's a fascinating story because I think a lot of users that are currently shooting with a Z9, for example, that are enjoying this amazing lossless 8K 60P with, I believe it was firmware version 2.0, what will happen going down the road if Nikon doesn't prevail? And now the next revision, version 2.1 or whatever the case might be at that point, will have that code removed. And now you can't shoot that 8K 60P anymore with any type of efficiency, lossless, right? So my suggestion would be to all Nikon users out there would be if you have this technology in your camera, whichever camera it is, right now it's a Z9, they might put in others, whatever. If you have this technology, I would say download a copy of your firmware and stick it on your hard drive somewhere so that you just keep it for safekeeping. And then if you need to upgrade your camera to the latest firmware because there's bug fixes that you really need to have fixed, you could always 
uninstall that upgrade and reinstall the old lossless compression upgrade like we see currently with the Z9 and then use it for shooting whatever you need to do and then put back the new firmware. That would be my suggestion. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, as I always say, please throw this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, wherever you frequent your community. Share it, share the channel. I would really appreciate that. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.